in the dairy. I do find a remark in William Jay's history where he says, in 1883, we, meaning John Coons III and family, left the Phelps Ranch, which had been run on share from 1877 to 1883, and moved to Bern, where the making of American cheese was again taken up. William J's next entry states that in the fall of 1884, Father John Kuntz III was called on a mission to Switzerland, and I had most of the responsibility of seeing to the work about the place. Apparently, while John Kuntz III was gone on his mission, his families were in Bern, and his sons were looking after things at home and helping with work at the Kuntz Brothers Dairy. William J. says that in 1885, while his father was in Switzerland, he took his first trip to Salt Lake City with his uncle Chris with two loads of cheese. While David was on his mission, Annie continued working for William Rich and Uncle Will Kuntz, still in Bern. David served an honorable mission for two years in Switzerland and baptized many people, held several leadership positions in the mission field, and left his daily journal for his posterity. When David was released, he again returned to Bern, where he again became involved in the community and held leadership positions in the church. We will revisit David and his remaining years in Bern later. Jacob Koontz was the sixth son and eighth child of John II and Rosina Canuti Koontz. He was born on August 5, 1859, in Rydern, Bern, Switzerland. He was baptized the 12th of May, 1870 at 10 years of age, just two months prior to his family emigrating to Salt Lake City. His being taught the restored gospel and his baptism were delayed because his father did not join the church until February, 1869. The first winter the family spent in Logan Jacob, at 11, was one of the smaller boys that gleaned wheat heads in the fields to supplement the family's food supply. When the family got to Ovid in the spring of 1871, Robert says that Jake and Will were responsible for herding the cows on the range at Bern. At this time, all of Bern was unfenced open range and was only regulated by respecting squatters' rights. When they arrived in Ovid, the family had only had two cows that Bishop Budge had given them, plus many that they were able to rent during the summers. Jacob was now 12 and was helping his father in his cheese-making business. Ida K. Boss, in her life story of Christian Kuntz, relates a bear story from the early days in Bear Lake Valley. She says that John III and Christian were feeding four to five hundred head of sheep on the Charles Rich Ranch, where they were having trouble with a bear getting in among the sheep at night and killing some. And he, Christian, and his brothers, John, David, and Jacob, and a neighbor, Got Gottlieb Dubach, all watched on the shed, then after killing the bear, she continues, early the next morning the men were up and one of them got the oxen and yoked them and loaded the bear on some poles on the running gear so they could take their trophy and show it to Grandfather Kuntz who lived up by the Burn Hills. These three references date this story to sometime after 1876. Jacob at age 17 was still working with his father in the Ovid Burn area in the cattle and dairy business. Robert says in his history, I had always worked for my father and upon our return, we, Carolyn Eschler, whom he had just married, lived with father in his home and began to operate an extensive American cheese factory. Father, Will, David, and I, Jacob was the cheese maker. Robert writes that Jacob was the cheesemaker for this enterprise in Bern during the summer of 1882. This was the year that they converted from Swiss cheese to American cheese. Jacob would have been 23 years old in the year 1882, working as head cheesemaker. Jacob had no written history, so the very little information which we have about Jacob 
was mostly written as comments and tidbits by others in the Kuntz family. Jacob had a very limited posterity, so in order to expand on his history, I have pursued the Susanna Rosina Hershey's history, as some was recorded by her younger brother David in his journal. He recorded some events in Susanna's life that give us a little more information on both Susanna Rosina and Jacob. The Jacob and Susanna Katharina Wren Hershey family were neighbors and friends of John Kuntz, the first, second, and third families in Zwischenflu, Switzerland. The Jacob Hershey family moved from Zwischenflu to Bachlin, a distance of about four to five miles in 1871, the same year that John Kuntz I caught pneumonia and died. Susanna Rosina was the second child and second daughter of Jacob Hershey and Susanna Catherine Warren Hershey. Seven children, being born March 10, 1862 in Zwischenflu. Susanna Katharina Ran Hershey, Susanna Rosina's mother, was baptized into the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints the 28th of August in 1867. Except for Lina, Katharina, and John Jacob, the children were baptized as they become of age, but their father Jacob would not join the church. The same year that Susanna Hershey was born, John Kuntz I and his daughter Rosina were being taught the restored gospel and were baptized into the church June 22, 1862. John Kuntz I was ordained a priest in the spring of 1868 and in the fall of that same year was ordained an elder by Carl G. Mazur and was given a leadership calling in the tiny Semital branch. The people of these Swiss dwarfs were friendly and knew each other and seemed to look out for each other. There was most certainly some interaction between the Kuntz family and the Hershey family because of their membership in the church. In the Kuntz histories, Jacob's wife was called so Rosa Susanna Hershey, but in the Hershey history she is called Susanna Rosina. Her siblings refer to her as Rose. The following information came from David Hershey's personal journal, a younger brother of Susanna Rosina Hershey, the same woman that married Jacob Kuntz November 14, 1882. In April of 1882, Rose and David's mother received a letter from John Stuckey of Montpelier, Idaho, asking if he, David and Rose, could come to America if John sent the money for passage. When Susanna asked Jacob H. about David and Rose immigrating, he said he, they could go, but he would not spend one penny of his money to assist them. Rose and David both wanted to go, so Susanna, their mother, answered John Stuckey's letter and <clears throat> addressed her answer by mistake to John Kuntz instead of John Stuckey. John Kuntz had been a neighbor in Zwischenflu. When John Kuntz received the letter, and this would have been John Kuntz III, he sent the money at once and did not tell John Stuckey about it. $200 came from John Kuntz by return mail, but it turned out to be $80 short. Jacob, their dad, said he would not help thinking, help, thinking they now could not go, but as soon as the church heard about it, they put up the additional $80, and David says that on the 24th of August, 1882, he and Rose left for Idaho. The trip from Switzerland to Liverpool was uneventful except for one storm aboard the steamer leaving Rotterdam. They then boarded the steamship Victoria at Liverpool, but they had to travel third class, which David said was very dirty and full of lice. The meals were poor and not very clean. One elderly brother, John Fuller, took David and they went to the kitchen and peeled potatoes where they received plenty of good food. They ate in the kitchen the rest of the trip. They were on the ocean for nine days. 
David said the trip went very good until they arrived in Granger, Wyoming. At Granger, he and Rose left the passenger train headed for Utah and took a train for Idaho. This was a new road with no passenger trains, just loads of ties and rails with a caboose behind and only four of us in that, the brakeman, the conductor, Rose, and I. The train went so slow that David could often walk as fast as they were traveling. At last we came to Cokeville, Wyoming. There the train stopped and a big man with big high top boots came in the caboose and asked in Swiss if we were Sister Susanna, Katharina Hershey's children. And we said yes and he shook hands with us and said I am John Coons and we've got to go about 15 miles. Then we got off the train. John entered the caboose at Cokeville while the train was stopped for water at the Cokeville water tank and met Rose and David in Cokeville. When John said they had about 15 miles to go, he stayed on the train in the caboose and rode with them to Pegram, the next water stop. In 1882, the railroad had to put water tanks every 15 to 20 miles so they could fill the boilers on the steam engines. Steam engines did not recycle steam, they vented the spent steam to atmosphere and the boilers had to be refilled every 15 to 20 miles. Pegram, Idaho was the next water stop after Cokeville. Pegram was the only water stop between Cokeville and Montpelier, about 15 to 16 miles each way between Cokeville and Montpelier. The water tank was in the middle of Pegram, which at that time was no more than a water tank and a small building that acted as a depot and several bunkhouses for railroad workers, and several farm cabins. David Hershey continues, Then we got off the train. It was about 10 p.m. and very dark in the month of September. No light to be seen, nor any houses. Brother Kuntz said we had to walk over this meadow to the Bear River. After we had walked about a mile, then he took a pistol out of his pocket and fired three shots. Then we heard in the distance someone answer. When we came to the river, we heard something splash in the water. Then we saw a man on a pinto horse coming to us. This was Brother Kuntz's oldest son, William J. He took me across the river first, then Rose, then his father. From there we walked through a dirty corral up to a log house. That is where we found Zion. In the morning when I got up, I went to see what the new home looked like. I looked east, north, south, and west, but not a house at all could I see. Just the meadowland across the river where we had walked the night before. The rest was hills and hollows covered with sagebrush and rocks. From the William J. Autobiography in 1882, John Kuntz III was running on shares what was known as the Old Phelps Ranch on the Bear River. From entries in the David Hershey Journal, it must have been in the Pegram area. In years past, Lyman Kuntz, using the memory of his father, Heber C. Kuntz, was able to establish the exact location of the Old Phelps Ranch, and he marked that location for us with a marker. When you go west of Pegram, about a mile, the river crosses the road. There is a bridge there now. William J. says in his history that during the years of 1875 and 1876, he attended school in Ovid. In 1875 was the year John Kuntz II built the first home in Bern. John Kuntz III and Sophie must have been in Ovid or in the cabin on the Rich Ranch on Aspen Creek during those years. At that time, John Kuntz III was also married to Magdalena Linder, as he had married her on the 2nd of November, 1874, just one week after marrying Sophie Strawbar. There would have been a second home somewhere. John had the lot and burn just below Bear Hollow, between the base of the peak and Graveyard Hill, which had a good spring on it. 
Between the years of 1875 to the spring of 1877, John probably built a log house with a clay roof on that lot and brought water to it from the spring above by using those infamous handmade wood pipes. William J. says that during the winter of 1874 and during the summer of 1875 he was herding cows and calves in Bern for his uncle Christian at the Kuntz Brothers Dairy. That must have extended into 1876 as he says that during the school seasons of 1875 and 1876 they attended school in Ovid. Then William J. says in 1877 they moved to the old Phelps Ranch where there was no school available as was so in 1878. That was because of the distance to Montpelier. Then starting in 1879 and 1880 they would move to Montpelier during the winter so the boys could attend school and back to the ranch each spring to milk cows and run the dairy. William J. continues that in 1880 and 1881 we took about 800 head of cattle to summer. He continued that work on the railroad started in 1881 and by 1882 the trains were running. Then William J. says that in 1883 they left the Phelps Ranch which was run on shares and moved to Bern where the making of American cheese was again taken up. So Jacob was in Bern in 1883 and he was the head cheese maker for the American cheese operation. So the trains were running in September of 1882 bringing rails and ties to continue the new line. David Hershey says that he and Rose rode the caboose of one of those trains from Granger to Cokeville before John Kuntz III entered the caboose and met them and they rode another 15 miles. Then they got off the train and he took them to the ranch. When David and Rose and Rose arrived at the ranch, John's two sons and both of his wives, Sophie Strawbar and Magdalena Linder Kuntz, were there. Rose, William J., and Johnny's sister was not mentioned by David, but he did mention that Magdalena had one daughter that was living there. David said that first, that first morning, one of the boys took a horse from the stable and brought in about 30 milk cows, which they milked, he milking seven. On Sunday morning, David recalled a team coming to the ranch with two old men in it. It was John and Jacob Stuckey. He said that the Kuntzes encouraged Rose and David not to go with the Stuckeys and to stay. David felt sorry for them as they had come from Montpelier about 16 miles. The next day, John III talked to David and offered him $10 per month to be paid back on the money he had sent him for immigrating if he would stay. David wrote that John told him the following, I sent you children the money because when I received the letter from your good mother, I remembered how many times I was about out of food and your mother gave us bread, potatoes, all kinds of vegetables, and so on, and I had almost forgotten.